19 COVID stories. Fighting on. May 2020. Gently easing the latch open, Major Bentham concentrated on making as little noise as possible. Even though asleep in their bedroom upstairs, Mrs. Bentham possessed an uncanny antennae. Later on seeing the day's newspaper, she would know that her husband had broken out in order to buy it, but it was a question of damage limitation. The dressing down, although severe, wouldn't be half as bad as actually being caught in the act. Having closed the front door safely behind him, the Major looked up at the sky. It was another crisp summer morning, the weather continuing not to play along with the media's depiction of the corona outbreak as a grim medieval plague. Martins and Swifts, just back from Africa, skimmed the terrace roofs of the houses opposite, the sun on their backs. The human race might have been in a crisis, but the rest of nature seemed to be having a whale of a time. The newsagent's was a five-minute walk away and a chance to stretch his legs, just what the doctor ordered. Buttoning up his old grey woollen officer's overcoat, he strode down the short garden path before turning into the quiet suburban street. He swung his arms, concentrating on his posture and paying special attention to his left foot, which had recently developed a tendency to drag. Nonetheless, at 85 years old, he could still march with the best of them. A little further down the street, a young woman, tottering on ridiculously high heels, was ignoring the tiny, overexcited dog pulling madly on the lead in her hand, and concentrated instead on the large smartphone in her other hand, which she held in front of her face, talking into it through her mask. Mask wearing was just one of the many misunderstandings peddled by a misinformed media. No one seemed to understand the simple medical fact that a mask was to prevent the wearer from spreading an infection he or she might be harbouring and not to protect them from one. That's why surgeons wore masks and the patients they were operating on did not. Underlying this misinformed belief was a narcissistic fantasy that a mask protected the wearer from the dirty world around them, somehow safeguarding their own precious perfection and purity. As if to confirm the Major's speculation, as he passed the young woman, she turned her head away from him and teetered off the pavement and into the street in order to maintain distance. He wondered if this absurdly exaggerated reaction had anything to do with his age. An increasingly common misconception was that the greater susceptibility of older people to the effects of the virus somehow made them more likely to be carriers. This had made the already existing ambivalence felt by the young towards the old to become more militant. Although not overtly articulated, the elderly were but now being ordered to remain in lockdown so that the young could get back to their normal, active young lives. Stay home, Grandad, or you might get hurt. Well, bugger that, thought the Major. He was sick to death of living under geriatric house arrest. Since retirement, his early morning walks to the newsagent had been the start to his day and would continue to be so, and, due to the sensible precautions he took regarding social distancing, with no risk to anyone. Perhaps the very fear of all things old went deeper. Oldness itself now being seen as a virus, something that could infect. Oldness was to be avoided. It was catchy. After all, Age had been the sole reason for the rejection of his offer of coming out of retirement for the duration. The Major was convinced of this. To think that the authorities had publicly requested for qualified help and then had the nerve to turn down his online application. Not even grant him an interview. 
with his record of service. No thanks. You'd have no use to us. Not to be of any use did more than hurt his pride. It left him bereft. The Major's trained response to all gloomy introspection steered his still very active mind towards his favourite mental exercise, making up clues for crossword puzzles. One immediately sprung to mind. Clue? Ego. Very delayed. One word, seven letters. Answer? I so late. Isolate. Excellent. Slightly cheered up by his jovial abstraction, the Major turned into the high street and was immediately struck by its portrait of societal schizophrenia. While some maskless pedestrians jostled past each other on the crowded pavements or stopped to chat with acquaintances drinking takeaway coffee, others in masks cautiously navigated their way through the busy street, exchanging neither greetings nor smiles. Not even eye contact was offered, as if a glance could be enough to pass on the infection. The Major resisted the urge to be too judgmental. It wasn't their fault. Just bad government. Bad crisis management. Why didn't the media simply broadcast the real science, instead of all the statistical nonsense and muddled recommendations? People needed clarity. The facts to be set out in black and white. The last thing the world needed at a time like this was a massive grey area, resulting in everyone doing something different. What a balls up. Such good military thinking was wholly ignored, of course. The authorities preferring instead all that war talk which sickened the Major so much. The doddery old D-Day veteran shuffling around his garden, getting knighted as a reward for aiding the media in turning the pandemic into a nostalgic reenactment of our greatest hour. It was as if the two world wars defined the very concept of military conflict and were the only wars the country had ever fought. There wouldn't be many veterans from Operation Banner in Northern Ireland cheering or being cheered. Certainly no one from the regiment caught in the massacre of Warren Point, into which he had been sent to clean up. He remembered the dead splayed out across the road. The 18-year-old private literally melted into the driver's seat of his lorry by the bomb blast. That had a lot more in common with the war against the virus than a couple of spitfires flying over the white cliffs of fucking Dover. What would be the next recommendation in the fight against COVID-19, he wondered. Collecting iron railings, perhaps. The Major passed a large billboard, already out of date. Stay home, keep everyone safe. The government now had a new, more ambiguous recommendation. Three words. First word, two letters. Second word, one letter. Third word, four letters. Clue. Exist as a single idiot. Answer. Be alert. Be alert. The Major felt rather pleased with himself. Not only had he made up a snappy satirical crossword clue, but a new a derogatory term for the word idiot. To be alert. As in, Boris Johnson, what a right lert. Approaching the newsagents, he saw the small, orderly line of waiting customers suddenly break up and crowd around something. Sensing an accident of some kind, the Major quickened his step and on coming up to the tightly packed throng, all with their backs to him, called out with seasoned, calm authority, Can you let me through, please? The backs drew apart, some turning in search for the calm voice of authority. He heard one woman shout, He's fated with the virus. The young man was lying on the floor, shaking wildly, eyes open and staring. The Major knelt down and swiftly removed the young man's mask before rolling him onto his side in the correct position. The violent shaking abated slowly, but the face was now swelling and turning red, the eyes still bulging. The Major knew what to do. Firmly taking hold of the young man's head, he gently pulled it back, and so clearing the breathing passage. He heard the click 
of the swallowed tongue fall back into place in the mouth, and the first breath inhaled sharply. The reddening faded, the eyes calmed. The Major looked up at the surrounding faces, all seeking an explanation from him. Epilepsy. Sometimes the patient swallows the tongue. He'll be all right, just needs a moment. As he stood up, the Major was rewarded with smiles of relief, a few friendly comments. Well done, mate. The lad's lucky you was around. It felt good to be of use again. One word, six letters. Clue? Ship's loading bay at Celtic Arch. Answer? Doctor. <laughs>